Good afternoon, everyone. It is Saturday, December the 26th of 2020, and I'm Janine Stanley, the Explorer Community Manager here at IRA, and we are here to bring you a presentation on today, the first day of the Kwanzaa holiday. Now, I'm sure a lot of you out there are wondering, what is Kwanzaa? I might have heard of it, or maybe you even celebrate it in your home, and you're here to check out a little bit more of the celebration. So today we have with us Ryan Bishop, our YouTube guru. Hello, everyone. I'm excited to be here today and happy to learn more about Kwanzaa. So hope everyone's having a great had a great holiday and yeah. looking forward to hearing more. Even more great holiday here. We also have Stephanie Watts, who is our host of Afternoon at the Museum. Hey, Stephanie. Hi, Janine, Ryan, Dr. Humes, Christopher. Hi, everybody. YouTube. Um, happy holidays and um, welcome to the presentation today. Looking forward to it. We got the Zoom crew here. We've got the YouTube crew here. And we have Agent Christopher here with us. Hello, Christopher. How's everyone? So back. Very happy to be here. Fantastic. And our very special guest today is Dr. Linda Humes. And Dr. Humes is the executive director of the Yaffa Cultural Arts Incorporated in New York City. She's also an adjunct professor at John Jay University in the city. And wait, there's more. She is the education director of the National Association of Black Storytellers. And you will find out exactly how she is part of that group as we move on today. And thank you, Dr. Humes, for joining us today. I am thrilled to be here. I'm happy to be here. And I say habaragani, which means what's happening, what's up. And it's the first day of Kwanzaa. And the principal is Moja Unity. So when I say Habaragani, you all answer back, Umoja, Habaragani. Umoja. Oh, there we go. And Ira, you have called us together in unity to celebrate Kwanzaa. And in Kiswahili, that word is Harambe, called to unity. So Harambe. So at the end, we can do our Harambe. So thank you for calling us together to celebrate and learn. Awesome. And you have a really cool video for us today. Can you tell us a little bit about what we're going to see in this video? Yes. So uh, a as you, you mentioned, Janine, I am a storyteller and I'm the uh, educational chair for the National Association of Black Storytellers, which, which is an association. And, uh, you know, that is uh, one of the places that I, I volunteer. And so as a storyteller, uh, we understand that storytelling is a wonderful educational tool as well as an entertaining tool. So what we're going to see today is a combination between drum and music and story and narrative to explain and celebrate the holiday of Kwanzaa. Fantastic. And we will stop the video to get some description for you because there are some amazing, I am told there is an incredible drum in this video uh, visually. So we are going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and start my screen share here. Okay, we will get... Zoom us. Zoom right. share toolbar window. System dialog. Mute. Zoom us as new system dialog. Zoom us as new audio submenu. Mute. Mute. More. Remote annotate. Pause share. New share. Question and answer. Okay. And Zoom us. Hopefully, I am now sharing my screen with Quick you. Quick time player. Quick time player. Anybody want to give me a hint? Yep, <laughs> you have a screen and audio. There you Super. go. Super. All right. So <laughs> Sorry, I was saying it, but I was muted. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, we are going to roll the video. Fast here. play slash pause. And away we go. Well, actually, I don't know. <clears throat> what are we seeing on the screen here first, Christopher? <clears throat> well, <clears throat> right now on the screen, we have Miss Linda uh, sitting. Uh, in a what I believe is a traditional dashiki, and her dashiki is very, very just elaborate. So we have a bread on the chest area, but on the linings of her shoulders, 
and her arms. We have what appears to be a peach and yellow color with beautiful vibrant patterns. We have gold sequins and what appears to be gold sequins that form the pattern of an eye with a white iris in the middle, excuse me, that sits right upon her stomach. And then the, it is a full length dashiki, so it does look like it goes past the camera all the way down to her ankles. And the pattern that is on her shin area that shows the front of it is once again, we have that gold eye with that actually looks sort of like a diamond with the white iris in the middle. And that blooms out into a white oval with a red flower and gold inside of the middle of that white oval with two round, mm -hmm. excuse me, white areas with blue circles inside of them. So very, very elaborate there. Wow. She's sitting what looks to be in wow. side of a library or maybe even a bookstore area. Tons of books and everything behind her on multiple shelves. We also have some artifacts and what looks to be some uh, traditional statuettes, maybe um, of African, African natives. We also look like we have maybe an African native warrior piece and a woman standing there behind on, excuse me, to the left side of her. We have a long table with all types of uh, all types of maybe novels and literature on it, as well as a basket with fruit for, I believe, what would be an offering. A picture of Barack Obama directly to her left-hand side and the word cast on what appears to be a chalkboard. Unfortunately, because the video right now is not played, I cannot see what everything that says on that black chalkboard. But to the far left of Miss Humes, we have a man, and he is wearing just a shirt, the shiki, that is yellow and green patterned. He has a black, uh, excuse me, a black, what looks to be a dread cap on, so to contain all of his hair. He has a white beard. Doesn't look like much of a mustache, but he is sitting with that traditional drum that you were all talking about in between his leg. The drum itself is what appears to be a very tall wooden mixing bowl. It, the drum is, I wanna say about three feet tall, very wow. large wooden mixing bowl with a tight, tight stretch of some type of fabric, maybe even in times, I believe they probably used animal skin as well, but it is a white fabric. And because of the color of it, that looks a little gray, you can tell that it gets a lot of use out of it. We have the thong strings that stretch around it and cinch it together onto the top. And then we have those strings, those what appear to be a tan string because the drum itself is of a light brown, the tan strings go all the way around in a vertical pattern that hold the top of the drum, the actual part that he would beat upon that holds it tight on there. I know underneath as they all stretch down into what appears to be a braided almost net like pattern when it reaches the pedestal, the pedestal of the drum itself, which sits by his shins, it's probably about a foot and a half, maybe even two feet tall. And the pedestal is, comes all the way because the drum bevels and comes to the middle slope and then the pedestal is rounded and goes all the way in a cone type pattern all the way to the bottom. Christopher, Beautiful. that was fantastic. And I'd like to add that my what I'm wearing is called the regalia because in, in indigenous societies, when you have uh, a customary outfits, uh, the, the term regalia is more inclusive uh, to the different kinds of garments. So this is um, not a, a daishiki, but it is a regalia, and it is from uh, West Africa, specifically Senegal, and the embroidery that you described so beautifully, and the different colors of the blue and the red and the gold are a, a royalty fabric. And so uh, when something wonderful is getting ready to happen like this, celebration then you would wear regalia that is like more for royalty or when you're you know doing something very very special in in the village and then uh sangha of the valley he has on uh you know a traditional uh shirt and that shirt is from ghana west africa and what he's wearing on his hair is a um it is a wool cap with red gold uh red gold in green colors, the black hat that represent the colors, you know, of the uh, of Jamaica and also uh, Pan Africanism and um, the Rasta uh, group, right, to hold his locks in. Now, what he has in his hand 
is uh, what we would term like a thumb piano, but it's um, it's from Embira. We're going to talk about that later in, in the show. And then, of course, the drum again that you described so beautifully is called Jimbe. Can everybody say Jimbe? Jimbe. 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 <laughs> and that's from uh, the ancient Mali Empire. So these are, you know, the countries of... Uh, the uh, Ivory Coast, Ghana, Guinea. In fact, the Jimbe is really, really indigenous to Guinea. Uh, uh, and 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 the um, and and so also Senegal and the Gambia. Now, this particular um, drum, uh, it is made like you said. Normally, like you said, it's made out of wood from a tree. And then back in the day, they would use animal sinews because when they would, you know, kill an animal, they would use the, uh, every part of the animal, right? So they would have they'd have food to eat, clothing. They they'd use it for utensils, for instruments, and they would use the sinews to tie. But this is very very strong cord that is tied around in a uh, pattern around the, the 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 drum itself, and it is and actually. The skin of the drum is not material. It's actually goat skin, which is then pulled, you know, and wrapped around uh, uh, the top, the mouth of the drum, if you will. And in the back is, yes, a library. And if you can visualize, you know, different artifacts and all kinds of different books. And, and the two little dolls are actual storytelling dolls, right? Uh, oh. A male and a female. And the table we will talk about later is the Kwanzaa table. And the books that are there is a book called Cast, which is a very popular, it's on the New York Times bestseller list right now. Uh, and also uh, of, uh, President Obama's newest uh, book, his biography, 700 pages. Oh. <laughs> wow. Part one. <laughs> yes, yes. And now you are going to be deemed an honorary agent, Linda. Yes, beautiful description. Thank you, Dr. Awesome. News. Awesome. Between the two yes. of you guys, that was awesome. Shall we start the video? Sure, sure. And, and you know, I, I'm going to be working hand in hand, you know, with, with Christopher and Stephanie because there's certain you know, I, uh, I'm learning how to be descriptive, but, uh, but there's certain, you know, items that are cultural and indigenous that I can help with. Yes. Awesome. That'll and awesome. also, yeah. folks, if you mm -hmm. have any questions, you can put them in the Q&A on Zoom, or you can put them up in the comments on YouTube, and we will be happy to answer the questions that, that we can answer today. Any so. questions that you have, feel free to. We will read them mm -hmm. out. Um, yep. After the video, we'll get to questions, and we can yep. read those out. Yep, and that would be the yeah. best time to ask is after the video. So store up your questions, and away we go. Selected. Hi, I'm Dr. Linda Humes, and this is Sangha of the Valley. Together, we are griots in concert, keeping the culture Zoom us. alive. Zoom up, currently muted. It is December 20, Quick time player. Quick time player. And it is the first day of Kwanzaa, Umoja Unity. Now, during Kwanzaa time, we use the language Kiswahili because Kiswahili is a language that is used by many, many ethnic groups throughout the continent of Africa. And when Dr. Karanga created Kwanzaa in 1966, he wanted to use a language that could unify Africans on the continent, but also Africans around the world right so that we could understand that we came from a continent that had rich principles and a rich culture so i'm going to see if we can learn a little key swahili today all right so harambe means call to unity like we've been called to unity today to celebrate kwanzaa now habaragani means hi what's happening what's up Habaragani. So when someone says Habaragani during Kwanzaa time, you answer back with the principle of the day. So today the principle is Umoja unity. So I would say Habaragani and you would answer back Umoja. Umoja. So we are going to start our program today in the tradition. Throughout the continent of Africa, when something very important is getting ready to happen in the village, 
it always starts with the drum, but it always starts with homage and respect for the ancestors. If we were together, I would ask you, who amongst you are the eldest? And do I have your permission to speak? I would ask the elders if we could proceed. And the elders would nod and give me the okay to proceed. And then we would pour libation. All through the continent, there is this ritual of pouring water in remembrance of those that have made their transition. And we see that this uh, tradition has come from the motherland over into the new world when we see the young men and women, uh, you know, pouring some honey for their uh, ancestors or for the departed. It's the same concept of respecting the ancestors, respecting the fact that we stand on strong ancestral shoulders. A dear friend used to say, you are the manifestation of the prayers of the ancestors. Just let that sink in for a minute. You are the manifestation of the prayers of the ancestors. So now we have libation. Well, greetings to one and all. We're here with our Cha Umoja cup, and this cup brings unity because the water that's in this cup is going to be poured for libation. Some pour rum, some pour what they have, but we go the natural way, we pour with water. And with clear, cool water, they pour the water and they say Omitutu, which means water. And when I say omitutu, you say ashe, because we pour the water and ashe means so be it. So when the water hits the ground, then you know what happens, the seed germinates. So we want to germinate the seed here today for Kwanzaa in this time. So with the, they invested in me from the elders, I am authorized to pour this libation. As we pour it, we say omitutu, you say ashe. Onatutu, ashe. Ile tutu, ashe. Bobo lese e du mare, ashe. Ashe pupo, ashe. For all those who are in the hospitals right now, we pour libation for them to honor our ancestors to come and help them. We say ashe. Ashe. For all of us who came through the middle passes, through that passes of slavery, as we build ourselves and we came out of that and we're now strong and we're running things, we say ashe. Ashe. To all those all over the children everywhere in the world, may they be safe. Ashe. Ashe. And to you and me, where we become strong to serve our God. Ashe. Ashe. So at this time, we would like to ask you to call the name of your ancestor. Everyone has their own ancestors, and then we have, we share ancestors. For example, my mother is Margaret Beard. My father is Vernon Francis. Those are my direct ancestors. So when I pray, I pray to them, and they always guide me to the purple rain. You know what I mean? So <clears throat> you can go ahead and call the name of your ancestor. Vernon Francis, Margaret Beard, Baba Tunde Ola Tunzi, mm -hmm. Chuck Davis, Charles Moore. And to all of those that we lost during COVID-19. Ashe, 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 Ashe. So by now you should have called on their spirit mm -hmm. and they will come and help us to get through this performance. So when you say the biggest Ashe, we say Ashe Pupa. And this is a language called Yoruba from Nigeria, from the Ifa people. So we say together, we say Ashe Pupo. One, two, three. Ashe Pupo. Ashe O. Ashe. And we also give homage to all those who lost their lives with injustice. Yes. Mm -hmm. So now we get to the top of the show. Now our ancestors cleared the way. 
for us to continue and you can receive the blessings. So we use the power of the drum. And this drum is the djembe drum. It brings to you joy. We're gonna call the people from East, West, North, South, and Central. Bakule, bakule. Like you and me and our party here and we shall sing a song to bring in the harvest because Kwanzaa is all about the harvest and we go directly to Nigeria from Baba Tunde, Ola Tunji and the people of Nigeria, the Yoruba people, they say Odunde, Odunde So, the idea uh, that Dr. Karenga had was that Africans that lived outside the continent of Africa would be able to go back to the rich cultured principles of the continent of Africa. It was a pan-African concept, if you will, based on, like Baba Sanga said, on harvest holidays. All throughout the continent of Africa, there are harvest holidays, and many indigenous people all over the world celebrate harvest. So if you see our table here, you see that we have a basket of fruit that represents harvest, right? And the idea is that we work hard, and then we reap what we sow, right? So we have uh, the, the fruit. So Kwanzaa literally means first fruit first fruit, Kwanzaa, yes? All right, so the other piece that's really important for us to uh, understand about Kwanzaa 
is that it is a cultural holiday. It is not a religious holiday. So you could practice any religion and still practice Kwanzaa because it is a cultural holiday. And there are principles for each day of the, uh, the holiday, all right, from December 26th all the way through January 1st. And these principles are devised for us to be reflective and look at these principles and to use them 365 days a year. It is a holiday to bring the families together, but also for us to look and be reflective of how we treated one another. Do we need to make amends to someone? What can we do differently? So it's not just about having fun, which Kwanzaa is a lot of fun, but it's also about being introspective, looking within ourselves, what can we do to make our lives better, to make our world better? Based on another very important philosophy called Sankofa. Many of you might have seen the Indinkra symbol from Ghana, where the bird is looking back. This is the Sankofa symbol, and it is based on the Sankofa bird in Ghana. Now, what the folklore is, is that the elders would sit at dusk, and they would notice this bird. This bird was a very unusual bird. It would go to a tree, it would make a nest, and then when it was time to go to another tree, it would always take something from the first tree with it to the second tree. So the elders said, huh, hmm, this bird, this Sankofa bird, we can learn from this bird that we must always take with us what is valuable from our past and bring it with us into the present so that we can have a glorious future that concept of Sankofa. So in the spirit of Sankofa, I would like to share a story with you from Ghana. And this is from the Ashante people. And the name of this story is, when someone does good to you, you should return good with good. Now, if we were in Ghana, I would say, all right, if you're ready for this story, I'm going to say, I go, and I want you to say, I may. That's the call and response of the storyteller, right, if we were in Ghana. Mm -hmm. But being that this is Kwanzaa time, we're going to use the key squat Healy call and response, which is Hodi Karibu. Hodi, are you ready? Are you listening? Karibu, yes, we're listening. So wherever you are in the world, wherever you are, New York, LA, if you're in the South Pacific in the Caribbean, in Europe, wherever you are, when I say Hodi, you all from wherever you are on your couch, in your living room, at your kitchen table, I want you to say Karibu because I'll hear you and I'll know you're ready for the story. So here we go. Hody! 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 There once was a very old woman. And this old woman had a terrible sore on her leg. The sore was so painful that sometimes she was not able to walk at all. Now this bird was in the sky and she saw this old woman. She descended to the old woman and she said to the old woman, how on earth are you able to walk with such a terrible sore? Well, the old woman said that the sore was so painful and that every step was so painful for her. Well, the bird, which was a beautiful eagle, said to the old woman, I can help you. But I know how you human beings are. If I do good to you today, you will return my good with evil tomorrow. Oh, no, 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 said the old woman. Please, if you could help me, please help me. So the eagle instructed the old woman to close her eyes. Close your eyes, old woman. Now, open them. When the old woman opened her eyes, the trees of the forest had cleared. Close your eyes, old woman. Now, open them. This time, 
time when the old woman opened her eyes, there were marketplaces and people and huts as far as the eye can see. Close your eyes, old woman. Now, open. This last time when the old woman opened her eyes, the terrible sore had disappeared. Oh, how can I repay your kindness, said the old woman. Ah, that cotton silk tree is all that I desire. And the eagle flew to the top of the cotton silk tree. Now, in a few weeks, that old woman became very, very prosperous. However, she had a little granddaughter that lived with her. And I trust that none of you know any children like this, but this little girl is what I would call a brat. Every day she started screaming at the top of her lungs. I want an eagle's baby to chip. I want an eagle's baby to chip. If I don't get an eagle's baby to chip, I'll just die. Hmm. So the old woman knew that the eagle had hatched two baby eagles and she instructed the men to go from the village. Go to the cotton silk tree and bring the creatures to me. The sound of the axes against the tree was pit, pit, pit. The tree almost fell to the ground when the eldest of the baby eagles cried out for its mother, Sango! of her eldest baby eagle flew back to the cotton silk tree. Sandori. And with the sound of her voice, the tree that had almost fell to the ground came back to its upright position. Sandori. And the men that were chopping the tree were devoured in the ground. If she comes back to you, let her take you, she instructed her children and she flew off. Now the next week, that little granddaughter started again. I want an eagle's baby to chew. I want an eagle's baby to chew. If I don't get an eagle's baby to chew, I'll just die. So once and again, the old woman summoned a few of the men from the village, go to the cotton silk tree and bring the creatures to me. The song of their actions against the tree was pit, pit, pit. The tree fell to the ground. The men went into the nest. They were able to capture the youngest baby eagle. The eldest baby eagle flew to the Wawa tree. The men took the youngest baby eagle and presented it to the old woman. She cooked it with plant and served it to her grandmother. story.
three is the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. The wisdom of Kwanzaa is that we can take these stories, these folk tales, these fables, these legends, and we can extract the wisdom from them and use them because they're universal and they're timeless. The story of the eagle and the old woman is as important today as it was in ancient Mali. So now we're going to have drum story because one of the principles of Kwanzaa, the sixth day of principle of Kwanzaa is Koumba. All right, so we're going to go a little out of order, but by the end of the program, you're going to really understand about all the seven, seven principles, but uh, Baba Sangha is going to talk to us a little bit about Koumba creativity. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Big up to Professor Dr. Linda Hughes, you know, because Africa is the largest continent, you know, it takes up like half of the world. Second largest. Second largest mm -hmm. to me is the largest <laughs> name, Africa, you know, mm -hmm. because all the resources come out of there, you know, and they, they use all these resources all over the world. And one of the resources that came out of Africa was the drum. Mm -hmm. Why I say resource? Because they use the tree, right? And they cut the log and, you know, they shape it. They shape the log and then they dug out everything from the inside, you know, no holes on the side. And then they put the skin of the animal, right? The goat skin, right on top of this drum. Some drums get cow skins. Some drums get mule skins. Depends on what's in your area. Where you see, the djembe drum comes out of the Empire of Mali, so there are lots of goats, so they used to go very light and the drum is very light. So then they, they take the skin, they put it on, they mounted it onto the drum and then they tied it with the rope, you see, really tight and they tuned up the drum. Now the sunlight also helps because when the sun shines, the skin gets very tight to the wood. It draws the skin to the wood. So you get a really high sound. So we, we, we live here right now, so we don't have that hot sun. So what we did was we pulled our drums really tight and we keep them tuned, you see? So this is Jimbe drum, and it's Jimbe drum is drum, you see? So wherever you go in Africa, drum is drum. It calls the people to attention, and it's their culture. But this drum here is not just boom, bam, boom, bam, boom, you see? So this drum is about sound, see? You create that sound with your hands, with your ears, with your eyes, with your mouth, and that sound comes from deep inside. So when you play the drum, people feel it all through their feet. You know, if you're deaf, you can feel it in your feet. And people sitting in the audience, it goes all through their feet and it goes all to the head. So the energy rises up. That's why the drum is so powerful. So when you play the drum, you pray for peace, you play for love, you play for food, you play the drum for everything in life. But the notes of the drum is what makes people Yeah, so you 
I said music. First music was from the drum. The first instrument is the drum. But in 1692, they took away our drums. So from then to now, now we have the drum back, kind of, and they took away our drums. So we were able to sing the rhythm, you see? So uh, uh, the slaves, they, 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 they held on to the tradition by singing. And when they sing, they would sing the drum, you see? So they didn't have any drums, but you know, they would sing, they would beat on boxes, they would beat on whatever. So let's sing a little bit, right? Whatever I sing, you sing after me. Goon go do. Goon go do. Goon go do go do boom. Goon go do go do boom. Goon go do go do boom go do. Goon go do go do boom go do. Goon go do go do boom pa. Goon go do go do boom pa. Goon go do go do boom pa pa. Goon go do go do pa pa. Goon go do go do boom pa do pa do. Goon go do go do boom pa do pa do. Boom pa boom pa boom pa go do. Boom pa. a hand you did very well so you see the drum it it, it 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 was created from love it was created by someone putting their head together and putting it together you know the creativity of all so what i want to do right now we want to tell you that this is not the drum you see this is just the tree the skin of the animal but you need one more spirit the spirit of you or the spirit of someone else who's sitting next to you with the drum right so with that spirit now we have the trinity the spirit of the wood the tree the animal and now the spirit of you so with that now we are complete and it, now it's a drum but i'm the drum you're the drum you're the drum and we're the drum, we're the drum. so point to yourself right now say i'm the drum i'm the drum mm -hmm. point to somebody in the room or the picture on the wall or your ancestors that's in the room say you're the drum you're the drum and now put your index finger this is the index and I want you to make a circle like we are the world and say, we are the drum. We are the drum. Right? So I'm going to ask Professor Humes here to show you. And then we're going to do it in a rhythmical form four times. We're going to come to New York now. Ah, go ahead. That's I'm the drum. Uh -huh. You're the drum. Uh -huh. We're the drum. Give him one more time. Show him one more time. I'm the drum. Uh -huh. You're the drum. Uh -huh. We're the drum. You got that? So now we're going to jam. We're going to jam. Right? Let me set up the rhythm. We're going to take it right here. Invented in the Bronx by a Jamaican from Jamaica. Now they call it hip hop from right there in the Bronx, Boogie Down Bronx. This is the music of hip hop coming from Africa to America. We're gonna say one, two, one, two, three. Everybody say, I'm the drum, you're the drum. No, give yourself a hand, give yourself a hand. You don't know. So if you understand the drum, this one is called Jambe Drum. And it's from the Empire of Mali. And go and research Mali and, and those Manding people, the Mandingos, you know, from Sangha Town and you know, and from Bolamakote people, you know, and all the way down, you know. So um I just wanna say peace and love. If you have a drum already, keep playing your drum. That's the key. If you don't have a drum, you know what to do. This is Christmas time, so drummer boy, go get a drum. <laughs> Peace out. One love. Oh, Happy goodness. Kwanzaa to you. Wow. Ryan. Fantastic. Ah, shit. And Zoom you us. know what, when Baba Zoom was saying Zoom that Africa bar window, system dialogue, the largest question and answer. Uh, a continent, it's, it's the first continent because the first human beings were found Quick time in player. Uganda. Quick time player. Great Kwanzaa move. Right? Zoom, Zoom us, currently and unmuted. There, I went ahead and stopped. Zoom us, new window. For you. I uh, uh, heard you. Yes, hear, I am. Uh, Stephanie. Um, yes, I, I, I was busy playing desk drums, so I was like <laughs> totally into that. That was so much fun. That was beautiful. Currently and muted. I'm only stopping for a quick moment to ask Christopher if uh, I'm sure there was 
lots going on. I was just so enamored with the presentation that I, I couldn't even raise my hand to speak. But is there anything, Christopher, that stood out that you might want to describe uh, for, for us? Definitely. Um, one of the biggest uh, things, Miss Linda, is very, very good. And I know it has to go with the storytelling. I've definitely heard stories told before. Everyone has heard stories told before. And everyone has also fallen asleep having stories told to them and the amount of character and gesturing that goes into the storytelling, not just from her, but from her partner as well, that is also accompanying her. It's just, um, I've never heard uh, stories told with music accompanying them. And I see now that it mm -hmm. is a very powerful element, but also her face and her hands, how she becomes different characters doing different things with just the gestures of her face and her hands. You would not have to see anything else of her body while she does it. When she was becoming, when she was becoming the old woman, changing scenes, seeing different things and closing her eyes. And then when she would remove her hands, it was almost, you would say Broadway, like how her face would light up and change. And she would become these different things when she was the oldest, when she was the eldest of the Eagle babies, how the fear would come over her face and the confusion. And then when she would become the Eagle mother and how you would tell, you could tell just from her being, how that was an otherworldly being that was not just any mortal eagle. And when she was casting her magic as the eagle, her hand gestures being in front of her, almost as if, and I'm sorry for the description, but almost as if old school, how people would describe someone doing Kung Fu, how one hand is farther ahead, the other hand is closer, both hands are vertical and pointing up, not making fists. And I think that was one of the most important things because to hold an ax and to do actions such as that, we need to make a fist. But as the eagle to do anything, there was no fist being made. The hands were splayed open, so I, the, the wings, the feathers being splayed open. Thank you to everyone. This is so cool, thanks. There was no, there was no um, uh, anger or hate or anything in that, which is why I believe she told the baby eagle to let themselves be taken. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, yes, there was a lot of, uh, so much character, so much in just being so little, just with the hands and the face. And also I think the, the skill to be done with, most people would find music accompanying them speaking to be distracting, but to be able to use it as your magic to make it happen. And the smiles, the smiles on your faces as you do this, uh, the life, you can just really see that. That's amazing. That was a beautiful story. Thank you so much. And I, I don't know if there's quite a bit more of the video to go. Um, so I, I will uh, go ahead and let it go and maybe- Quick time player, quick time player. Great quantum of window, play slash pause. Selected. And the idea of a philosophy that goes all through the continent of Africa is very, very special because we, from Nigeria with Babatunde Olatunji, he talks about Amdajum Yudajum, that we all have uh, this, this universal part of ourselves. He used to say, we have the drum, we all have our heart and our voice, mm -hmm. right? In South Africa, they say Ubuntu, which is, I see you, or I see the humanity in you, or I am because you are. Looking at, again, the connectedness of all of us as human beings. So, Umoja is unity. Then the second day is Kuji Shagulia, self-determination. Then the third day is Ujima, corporate uh, uh, collective work and responsibility, Ujama, cooperative economics, Nia, purpose, and then Kumba, which Sangha just did a whole beautiful piece on. And then the very last day and the last principle celebrated on New Year's Day is Imani, faith. And that's the day where you, we traditionally have a big feast and have you know, many people come come over, right? So uh, many people celebrate where one day, you know, they'll go to one person's house or they'll celebrate within their home. But then on the last day is when they really have a party, if you will, and really have a big feast and everyone comes together. So what I want to do is just show you a little bit about the table here. Uh, 
What I want to say uh, is that it's really important for everyone to understand the principles of Kwanzaa, but also to have a culturally responsive uh, approach to how we learn about ourselves and others, right? Uh, so we have the gifts of Kwanzaa, which are called the Zawadi. Now, I like to say that the gifts for Christmas, that's like your PlayStation 5, if you could get a hold of one, right? And all those fun gifts. But the gifts of Kwanzaa, the Zawadi, are gifts that you can make with your own hands and gifts that help with a person's Nia or purpose. So, for instance, Baba Sangha is a musician. What would be a great gift for him? A drum, a mm -hmm. bira, a harmonica, uh, because he's a musician, right? So, though that's what's important, or you know, books that can help better someone. Uh, so, I have some books out here. Um, the, the, this this one, of course, is. Um, President Barack Obama's book, and then, of course, um, Michelle Obama's book. I, I read this one. I didn't get through this one yet, and I'm in the process of reading this one, right? But these books are wonderful gifts uh, for, for people, right, who are interested in learning more about uh, history, about uh, politics, you know, um, another great Sawadi, again, is a presence that you make yourself. So this is a uh, workbook uh, called Kwanzaa Time to Celebrate that uh, that we did, Yafa Cultural Arts, with the CD, right? It won the um, Silver Honors Parent Award, all right? And it's a CD all about Kwanzaa and a workbook about Kwanzaa. So this is a great Zawadi, right, to, to be able to give to someone. And then I have my instruments also, uh, which again are great samadhis. Now, here next to Baba Sangha, he can lift it up. We have ears of corn, and the ears of corn represent the children in the family. So if you have uh, three children, you would have three ears of corn, right? Because that's the harvest of the family is the children. So we have the um, ears of corn. And then, thank you, Sangha. And then we have um, the Moshe cup, which Baba Sangha talked to us about before, the unity cup, right? Uh, and then we have the Kenara, which is the candelabra that's used for Kwanzaa. And uh, you can uh, see here, that it has three red candles on the right hand side and one black candle in the middle and then three green candles on the end so these candles represent the seven days of kwanzaa but they also represent the seven principles and each day you light a candle on the day of that particular principle so today we're gonna like this one, uh, the black one, uh, for Umoja. And then tomorrow, we would take the same black candle, which represents the people, and, rep and we would light the red candle that represents the blood or the hard work that we do. And then the next day, it would be a green, red, green, until all of the candles are lit. And the idea, what I love to say when we are working with young, young children, is the red is when you get off your game and you study, right? The red is when you do your homework and you study and you put all that hard work in, but the green is when you get them A's and B's, right? And it's the same thing as adults, we work hard and then we reap the benefit of, uh, you know, getting what we, um, what what we sow, right? So again, it's looking at those principles. So that that's the canara, right? So I um, I said in the beginning of the program that uh, you were going to know the principles by the end of the program, right? I, that that's what I said. Sure so that. I did say that. So I, I so we have to help you with that. Yes. So. Uh, Kuji Shogalia, again, is self-determination. 
Ujima Collective Work and Responsibility, which is so important. Ujama Cooperative Economics, that we need to be conscious of how we spend our money, right? Uh, and uh, what we do with our money and how we can, again, unite with uh, others so that we can build community with our money. Uh, Nia, purpose, right? What is your purpose in life? Kumba, being creative in everything you do. And, and you know, the other thing I like to say, Baba Sangha, is that uh, sometimes when people think of creativity, they think that you have to be a storyteller, you have to be a visual artist, so you have to be a musician. But you could be a creative accountant, not to the point where you get in trouble now, but anything that you really have a passion for and you're really good at, that's that's an art, right? So being creative, Kumba. And then, of course, we cannot do anything and you can't have any of the other principles if you do not have faith so as we come out of this year 2020 into a new year 2021 i challenge everyone to have a spirit of faith that we can move forward in imani so that we can know that our ancestors were resilient so we have resilience in us. And if we have made it this far, and we know that we have to have the faith to continue to move forward. So uh, let's go back to hip hop here. And, and, and you know, it, it, when we repeat things, then we, we remember them, right? So let's see, I need I need a hip hop beat. You need right? a hip hop beat. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then what I need you all to do at home is I need you to clap your hands. Yeah, yeah. That's right, everybody, come on. Put your hands together. Hey. Are you ready? It's a Kwanzaa thing you should understand. Principles of life to make your mind expand. Emoja, unity, Uji Shakalia, self-determination. It's a Kwanzaa thing you should understand that we all have the power to make a plan. Follow it to make a plan. Ojima. Yeah. Somebody, everybody, Woo! 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 Wo
having fun. I'm having fun. I'm having well, fun. I want to tell them something. In the, yes. Let me see this instrument. You see this instrument here? You find this in the church, right? You know why it came so popular in the church? Because they couldn't use the drum. Like mm -hmm. I told you in the, in the drum story, they banned the drum in 1692. So we had to come up with ways. And this was one of the ways, you know, the slaves, they used to play the tambourine and they would use it as a rice sifter. They would sift the rice, you know. When masa gone, they turned it over and it's a tambourine. So I just wanted you to know that. When you see a tambourine, remember, it came to hold place for the drum. But now the drum's back. Why? I'm the drum. I'm back. You're the drum. You back. We're the drum. So remember that in your quantum time. Next time I you see a tambourine, think about the slave. Zoom us. Zoom us. Zoom shed currently and unmuted. We are stopped for Zoom a second new window. here. So I yes, bet you'd like to know about that tambourine, right? The tambourine, the candles, and there was one other thing, but definitely the tambourine and the candles. If currently muted. No problem. So first thing I wanted to just say, Dr. Humes, is I apologize before for not um, uh, recognizing and, uh, and, and saying your title. Uh, you are, in fact, a very learned woman. Uh, you know, obviously seeing you in the regalia and seeing you now, obviously, I'm, uh, I know not everyone can see her in the video uh, video feed right now, but once again, she looks like she's done in the regalia. So uh, I apologize for that. So that will not happen again. Uh, but No problem uh, at all. You, you was bigging me up so much. Uh, after my story, I was wanting to know if you'd become my agent. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now. And so, um, uh, so as she, they just busted out the tambourine, as you can see, and it's a very traditional looking tambourine. It is a wooden, a round wooden base. I want to say it's about 12 inches in diameter and stretched across of it, stretched, stretched across the top of it once again is some kind of what could be very well animal skin. And that's probably how it was made back in the day. And on either side we have, it looks to be about maybe 12 rings total. It looks like two rings on top of each other. So it has to have a ring, one metal ring, and then directly underneath that against the wool, against the wood is another metal ring. And that clings together. So there's on either side, there's probably about four rings, so eight total on either side. As they shake, as they shake the tambourine, that's what makes the sound. And it looks like it is, once again, just tied on. So another simple instrument where it is just wood, animal skin, and it looks like, once again, as they were talking about how most every single mineral, metal, any precious resource does, in fact, come from Africa, very well could there be something like that. So as we were talking about with the candelabra behind them, she has a more traditional looking one. I have seen them uh, metal, but hers is all wood, as is the tradition and the theme of everything uh, on the table right now. So it has seven candles. There are the three red candles that are on the left side of the candelabra, the one taller black candle in the middle, and then three green candles on the right side of it which as she explained earlier, what their meanings and purposes was. But the black candle always seems, as I've seen in picture, the black candle always seems to sit higher than the other candles. The other candles are all at the same level and the black candle is either taller or just sits higher. Mm -hmm. And before we go back to video, is there anything else, Christopher, on the table that, that we wanna describe? Now she has the she has the wicker basket with the food behind it, and it looks just to be fruit. I see grapes. The corn pieces that they showed were dried corn, mm -hmm. so one of those uh, traditional multicolored corn pieces, but dried out still with the stalks uh, attached to some of them and the wrapping around them. And as they said, there were three on the table representing three children. And one of the things I also wanted to mention, quick time player, great quantum of about was the thing that the item that he was pouring the mm -hmm. libations into, he was pouring the libations into a plant. So as he said, they were water, nothing is wasted going into a plant to nourish that plant as well. And another thing as well that I'm sad that I didn't get to mention is that um, uh, Baba Sangha, his hands, uh, it looks like in many instances, it looks like his hands are just sitting flat on the drum while it is uh, beating really, really fast. They're almost like a blur. So um, uh, you can't even tell that he is actually playing the drum. If you couldn't hear the sound, you wouldn't know he was playing it. So he is very, very talented. Well, the last thing is the Unity Cup. Is there a description of that? The Unity Cup is a smaller cup. It is a, almost looks like it is made out of, could be a cup that was made out of clay mm -hmm. on a classic, you know, a sculpting wheel. Very small about, I want to say about four, 
four inches in height and coming down, if you take a wine glass and you just take out the stem and you mm -hmm. connect the stem to the very bottom of the cup uh, and it looks like it's a thicker, a thicker cup, but very small just to fit in the palm of your hand. And he was pouring the libations from that unity cup. Okay. And, and it Dr. Was brown. Humes. It was brown in color as well. And Dr. Humes, I, I want to, I was just going to say thank you for the Henny reference. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to add, there was also a small instrument that I was uh, playing on the last song, which is called a shekere. It's called a shekere in Nigeria, but it is basically a calabash instrument that has beads around it, and you can find it in many places in the continent of Africa with different names. But the shekere is very important because it's an instrument that really crossed the Atlantic with the people. You could find the shekere in Cuba, you could find it in Brazil, you can find it in the Caribbean, in the Latin countries, they call it calabasa, and it's very, very uh, prevalent in Latin music. Um, mm -hmm. It's made with a gourd. You know, they take the insides out, they dry it in the sun, and then they put beads on, and usually they're, they're colorful beads, different kinds of colors, and the one Hers that I have here mm -hmm. is is red, and the neck is, is very special because it kind of curls which is a very unusual kind of gourd. This particular gourd that I have here, this shaker eight, uh was not cut. The, the neck, if you will, was not cut. So it's like, it's like almost like you just pull it out of the ground, but it's such a unique shape because it kind of goes up and curls. And so in that curl, I'm able to put my hand in and, and, and shake the shaker eight, which is a different way of playing than if I had a bigger shaker eight that I would hold the deck in one hand and then place uh, the instrument with the other hand that makes people think that I'm tapping it, but it's more of a, uh, a uh, back and forth movement. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I love the shaker ray, by the way. That, love that. Zoom us. That Zoom shadow. <laughs> so. And the last instrument, since, unmuted. She, since she did, um, Zoom us is you are the last instrument, I wanted to say the instrument that is prevalent through the entire song where you hear that the threading, the string instrument, I believe it was, you said it was more or less like a hand piano. Mm -hmm. um, it is almost looks like another gourd that was split in half. If you took a spaghetti squash more or less and split that in half and it looks like it was dried out as well. It fits in, he holds it in both hands and you cannot see his thumbs as he plays it, but I'm guessing that's probably what he plays it with is his thumbs. Mm -hmm. I've Absolutely. only ever seen the back the indigenous of that. Thumb piano, an indigenous thumb piano and they call it different things uh, in different places as well, in Bira, Kalimba, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Currently See, unmuted. I told you there were a lot of great instruments. Zoom us as in new window. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> and uh, I, I was jamming, so next time I'm going <laughs> to unmute so you guys can hear my desk drums. So <laughs> Get your shaker ready, <laughs> like, I don't have a shaker. Actually, I do, but it's not in this room. And I got a beautiful one in New Orleans. Uh, when I went to New Orleans, I saw it in a shop, and I said, I have to have that. It's so cool. <laughs> Currently muted. Okay. Quick time ahead? player. Great quantum of window selected. They used it and it worked. And in the other piece too that is really uh, interesting about uh, this tambourine or, or tambourines in general is that again uh, they are universal to the African diaspora. You can find uh, tambourines, they, they call them different things obviously in Brazil. Oh, they yeah, have pandel, all kinds of pandeiros, all kinds of, uh, of tambourines or you know this kind of an instrument yes. as well as the shakere. Again, a Yoruba call it shakere, right? But again the idea of gourd instruments is again universal to many many parts of the continent of Africa as well as the thumb piano that Baba Sanga is playing uh, now is that one a kalimba? this is Mbira that's an Mbira right? Kalimba is from uh, South Africa and this is from Central Africa so they call it Mbira mm -hmm. from the Calabas the kalimba has wood 
this one has got a bad. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. So Not again, enough. you know, there's uh, so many uh, similarities. There's this diversity. There's so much diversity on the continent of Africa, you know, in terms of languages, 2,000 languages spoken. Uh, and, and with the instruments, there's different kinds of drums, but there is also a universality of thought and a universality in how some of the natural resources are used for instrumentation. So we're going to end with a song that I think everybody knows. And this song, I think, really uh, emulates the, this holiday season, uh, this little light of mine. Because if you are uh, celebrating Hanukkah, you're celebrating with the menorah, you're celebrating with eight candles. If you are in a Christian faith, you celebrate the lights and the light of the baby Jesus. Uh, and then Kwanzaa with the lights of the Kinara. But the idea is that we're looking at the light which is in every single one of us, whether it's in South Africa, you say Ubuntu, whether it is in, in, in from Yoruba, and, and you, you, you say that through the drum, that I'm the drum in the Yoruba language. The idea is that uh, we are all connected as humanity, and we must stand together now to bring humanity another level. We don't have to go back to the past of what did not work, but we surely need to take from the past what does work into the present with us so that we can have a glorious future in the spirit of Sankofa. So we're going to end with this little light of mine. Alright? This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. And Harambe! Yes, sir! Harambe! Yes, sir! Harambe! Yes, sir! Now, in the tradition, we gotta say that seven times, right? Each night, you know, so we say it seven times. You ready? You let ready? Me, uh, let me light our candle. You camera. ready, Professor? Yeah, right. Let's yeah. do this like Brutus. Right here. Uh huh. You got so it. So we're gonna light the uh, candle for Umoja. Yes. So as we light the candle, we'll say Harambe, right? And you put your fist in the air like this, and we say, you ready? You ready, we say, Harambe. Harambe. And the second night, Harambe. Harambe. Third night, Harambe. Harambe. Fourth Harambe. night, Harambe. Harambe. This night, Harambe. 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 Six nights, Harambe. 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 And the last night, Harambe. Harambe. Here we go. One, two, three. Harambe. 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 Zoom, zoom us. Zoom share toolbar window. System dialogue. Question and dialogue. Now, Umoja is the middle candle, correct? Is the black candle? The, yes, on the Umoja for the unit. And then we use that black candle to light every other camel. I mean, every other candle uh, throughout uh, the every day. Are you muted? Because we represent the people. Well, that was amazing, wow. Dr. Humes. Amazing, and that was way too much fun. <laughs> you and Baba Sangha are amazing. Just thank you so much for. You can't hear my desk drums, can you? <laughs> <laughs> So, oh, gosh. 
Um, do they not, I don't know how you want to work the um, Q&A. So, um, Ryan, do we have, I'm going to stop my screen share here with the lovely picture of you folks with the candles. There we go. So, Ryan, do we have any questions out there or shout outs or anything from Zoom or from YouTube? And while Ryan is checking that out. All right, out, let me yeah. unmute myself here. That was amazing, by the way. I have to. That was way too much yeah. fun, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, man. I was desk drumming. Yeah, yeah. I was going <laughs> to say. May, maybe using the dog as a drum monster. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's start with our. There we go. Yeah. Trying to get all my windows all here. Right. Right yeah, the, I was going to say <laughs> probably a number of windows open at this point. <laughs> so we have a shout out from Ali who says, This is so cool. Thank you. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> now, um, while we are looking at YouTube, we do have a hand raised. Oh. Um, so we're going to go ahead and awesome. hear from Ali, who just raised his hand Hello, here. Hello, Ali. And we know Ali from yeah. Minnesota. And uh, hello there, Ali. How are you this afternoon? I am doing well. It's warming up seven degrees yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> nice to be reminded of a nice warm place like Africa, right? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, yes. Gee. You know, a few things, a comment, and then a question. My comment is thank you to uh, Professor, I forget your name. I'm so sorry. Uh, Thank you so much. You were, I mean, the description that you provided was good too. So thank you for that. And Christopher, and just thank you, Ira, for putting this on. My question, I feel silly asking this, but I've heard, is there such a thing as Karamu in Kwanzaa? Karamu. K A R A M U Karamu. Yes, correct. Hmm. You know there might be. Can you hold on just one second? Just hold that thought. Just hold that. Thought. <laughs> <laughs> I will Stop you. We will. We will get you the answer. See, this is. I. I love this. I love this. See, Always good the, when you have to look it up, right? Yeah, yeah, these are the kinds of questions that I love you can yeah, Listen, prepared. listen. That's that's one of the reasons that you have books because you know no one knows anything, mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. you know, I can't channel Dr. Karanga right here, right now. So you know that's why I know that the name, the word, was very familiar to me, but I do not want to say uh, anything that's not. Correct. Mm -hmm. Now, I know just to not piggyback on that question, but I know that uh, a lot of times because this was a Pan-African holiday and Africans are everywhere throughout the world. So I know that these were done. Uh, this celebration can be celebrated many different ways, as you were saying, 2000 lang plus languages in Africa itself. So to know that this is going to be celebrated so many different ways, I know that the Karamu Yaimani that she's probably maybe mentioning is just one of the things as you sp spoke of, you called it the faith, the feast of faith that we have on that on one of the nights of celebration. So I know that probably has to do with when we really, you spoke of when people really, really feast. And I know I'm, uh, one of the Karamus, that feast itself was one of the ones that was, this was developed in 1969, as you said. Um, and this might've been one that she might be mentioning that was developed, I think in 1971 in Chicago. So it could be a different aspect of this. Because what they basically um, uh, criteria for in, in, in uh, invitation, you know, it's so then you know you can make a, a game out of it. Uh, you can strategize, so it's in, invitation like Karamo. Uh, so oh. in, in communal 
uh, Kwanzaa that's open to everyone. So, you know, whether it's your library or your cultural institution, like we're having now, it's communal, but it, it, it's open. But then you might choose to have a, a Kwanzaa celebration that is just with your family, because again, this idea of Kwanzaa, it's not just to celebrate and have fun. Maybe it's like, okay, there you go, like a family where you need to talk to one another to make sure that there's not any animosity, that that there was not any poor communication that needs to be straightened out, that there, uh, uh, there's no people like, you know, how the young people say, oh, you know, you're in your feelings, to make sure that... <laughs> <laughs> Did we lose you, Dr. Humes? Uh, maybe so. Oh, I hope not. Um, I'm sorry. What did you say? Oh, dear. There we go. Oh, there, okay. There we got we you go. back. We were having trouble hearing you there for a minute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, did, did you not hear what I said? Oh, well, we, yeah. We got most of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just, yep. yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. So, so, you know, I mean, within an immediate family, people might make amends to one another or talk mm -hmm. to each other about how they can better their relationship. But then they might decide, okay, we're going to do intimate, uh, uh, you know, uh, celebration, the Karum or the invitation, if you will, will be for our immediate family. But then on the last day on, uh, you know, Imani with faith, where we have the feast, ah, then we're going to have our extended family and our friends mm -hmm. and, and everyone. That's great. So that brings up another question. Um, how has that celebration or any of these celebrations, how have they changed this year with some of the COVID restrictions? Because I know a lot of the Christian holiday celebrations have changed, but how have these celebrations changed? Well, absolutely the same as all. You know, the same uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas, that everybody had to pivot you know, in terms of how we celebrate, right? So again, you know, like, uh, like for instance, um, the American Museum of Natural History in New York uh, uh, is, has the largest celebration in the country with usually over 20,000 people in attendance. And mm -hmm. I am the, you know, the, the griot, which is the storyteller jolly of, of the museum. And I host that every year. This year, they did not even have a virtual, right? Mm -hmm. But some other organizations have, like the African um, Burial Grounds in New York, has a virtual celebration where every day they will have um, something on a principal their website. Uh, there's many other organizations that have all through the country that are doing virtual Kwanzaa to, to celebrate, you know, uh, our organization also. However, uh, again, for individuals, they're, they're pivoting that based on their comfortability. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, now love I'm going to get to the fun part because we all love you know, it. Food. <laughs> right. So most people, you know, would, would oh. take that and say, okay, this is what Dr. Fauci and this is what our governor mayor is saying under 10 people with masks so uh, you know so it's the same thing you know like with Kwanzaa or people are having Zoom celebrations with family and friends it's no different than how we're celebrating Christmas and the Hanukkah and Thanksgiving and birthdays and graduation mm -hmm. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. exactly everything else everything just else just trying to be responsible yeah mm -hmm. yeah and, and I am so sorry for interrupting you there, um, Dr. Humes, but um, we'll get to, in our last few minutes here, the really fun topic, food. Um, what kinds of foods do you have at your celebration? What's like a special dish for you and your family? Oh, all right. So for <laughs> me, you know, for, for Kwanzaa, uh, like, okay, for this, this year, uh, I made a uh, peach cobbler, right? <laughs> so, it, you know, it could be it could be recipes from your family. What I'm going to do for next uh, Saturday is my mother had a special sweet potato souffle uh, oh. uh, recipe that she had. And I do not make it normally because I don't have the time. I'm not a real baker. I 
mm-hmm. did not learn how to bake a lot. So, but I'm going to do that because I don't have the time to do it. And it's something that is uh, in homage of her as her ancestor. But it's also, you know, a, a food that's not necessarily healthy, okay, but it doesn't. <laughs> right. you know, it's got but, a vegetable but, in it, right? It's a root. It's a root. Come on. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> make you know uh, certain uh, certain like family uh, recipes that they want other people you know might um, choose to do uh, foods that are more natural you know or uh, foods that are you know vegetarian but that that are, or, or a more healthy uh, a substitute for some soul food dishes you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying so like let's say someone's doing uh, collard greens do this, you know, that's very traditional in African American um, tradition for New Year's. Anyhow, you know, to have collard greens, once we any kind of greens. So maybe instead of putting ham hock in it or uh, pig neck, so, you know, whatever, they might mm-hmm. use uh, smoked turkey or they might just use, you know, garlic and olive oil and different spices, you know. Mm-hmm. So it, 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 it's really open. And then, you know, if you see some Kwanzaa books they have certain recipes, they might have some recipes in there again that uh you know uh maybe use harvest uh, uh harvest types of uh of foods or and uh you know foods that are good for the soul you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I, I love the whole tradition of kind of honoring your ancestors with your your favorite dishes and things yes. that they made and Janine, the let me add and... to that mm-hmm. about the big mm-hmm. feast is also about like a potluck dinner it's very much about that like people bringing in their their favorite dishes so like janine whatever your your favorite dishes oh. or stephanie you might live near a bakery that has like the best whatever so you might bring mm-hmm. that so it's mm-hmm. really also about that potluck back to community bringing mm-hmm. everything so together everyone has their specialty or something that they bring that everybody yeah. looks forward to it's so much part of that as well Oh, wow. I'm coming over for the sweet potatoes yeah. to play. I was going to say, that sounds Yeah, delicious. I'll be in New York next Saturday. <laughs> I'll have the recipe in my book. Look out for, for my book next year. Look out awesome. for my book. <laughs> oh, oh man, that sounds now, delicious. Yeah. Now, Linda, could you let us know a website or where we can find out more about you and what you are doing in the community and uh, all of your various endeavors? Sure, sure. Uh, I'll put it in the chat, but oh, also fabulous. it's on yafaculturalarts.org. Yafa, and that's Yafa, Y-A-F-A? Org. Yeah, Y-A-F-F-A. And you can find us on Facebook. You can find us on YouTube. Fantastic. On Instagram. And, and once in a blue moon on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know how that goes. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, Ryan, do we have any more uh, questions, comments, shout outs, anything? We got a question, but he, he lowered his hand. So, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, um, we do have a question on YouTube, though. Mm-hmm. Go back to it here. Um, where can you, uh, where can a person find music similar to what was on the video? Ooh. Oh, well, again, you know, you can uh, go to uh, uh, Yafa Cultural Arts dot, um, uh, Yafa Cultural Arts, uh, Yafa, yeah, Yafa Cultural Arts dot org. All right. Because um, uh, we have CDs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Baba Sangha has CDs. Oh, awesome. Yafa has CDs. Um, I'm putting uh, the email address in the chat, which is Y A F F. That's two F's, like in Frank A A R T S seven at gmail uh, dot com, and uh, you know, just just email us, and if you want uh, like a, a CD that's just drumming. Then we can do that. We have another CD called "On the Shoulders of Our Ancestors," which is storytelling and music. Uh, um, you know, we have gospel, reggae, uh, goodness, uh, jazz, all on that uh, CD. It's interwoven with stories. Then we have Kwanzaa Time to Celebrate, which is a Kwanzaa CD that won the Parent uh, uh, Parents Choice Award Silver Honor. And then we have Griots in Concert, 
which is, uh, you know, a, a DVD, which is a good family uh, audience uh, video, you know, of storytelling. And then, like I said, Sangha has uh, some drumming uh, seats as well. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Well, I would like to thank you so much, Dr. Linda Humes, for joining us today. This has been really, it's been so much fun. And uh, this shows you folks, education can be a lot of fun. And uh, I'm going to, you know, do my desk drumming now because I am the drum. That's it. (laughs) So, you know, Ryan, you can be treated to that during our uh, staff meetings now. (laughs) And I'll make those go a lot faster. (laughs) But I would also... have to try to not start singing what you're playing. Uh, Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Yeah, I think the last thing you want me to do is sing. (laughs) So, (laughs) well, I hope all of you have a safe and wonderful rest of the holiday season and we will be back with you uh, this coming week for a little bit more Ira news and whatnot and uh, Ryan will be talking a little New Year's Eve maybe looking forward to that stay tuned for that 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 wasn't a big hint I don't know what was (laughs) get ready because we know we want to celebrate if nothing else the ending of the year 2020 but (laughs) and I I love the principles of Kwanzaa because they just so much speak to this year and all of the things that we've had to go through and had to do and had to really learn about ourselves and so thank you so much Dr. Humes thank you to Stephanie for being with us today and a special thanks to Agent Christopher who was outstanding thank you absolutely Well done. Dr. Uh, Humes, thank you again. Uh, This has been so enlightening. Uh, Amazing doesn't put it as a description, but enlightening, lifting. Um, It's going to be one of my better memories of 2020. So thank you so much. And I look forward to visiting your website. Um, And um, did you also mention that you have a YouTube channel or, or no? We yes, just, yes, we definitely have a YouTube channel and we will have content on there okay. every day of Kwanzaa. Oh, uh, great. And, um, yeah, so you, you should be able to find it. Um, uh, uh, Yafa, C-A-I, um, Yafa, C-A-I-N-C, you know, Yafa, C-A-I-N-C. That's the tag for the YouTube. Okay, thank you so awesome. much. Well, awesome. everybody, uh, let's do the seven Harambe's, okay? Uh, yes. Ready? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what are the Harambe! 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 Right. Right. Thank you very much, Dr. It's a great way to start Kwanzaa. Yes, make your heart feel very good. Thank you.